My name is Nick Fogue and I'm the General Manager of Tobin Brothers Funerals. As you all know, Tobin Brothers have been around for a long time serving the families of Melbourne, in fact since 1934, helping families deal with grief and loss and assisting them in organising a celebration of life for the loved ones that they have lost. We're all different and deal with things in different ways, or as they say, one size does not fit all. At Tobin Brothers, we offer people a variety of avenues of support as they deal with grief, not only at the funeral service, but during the tough times ahead. In the past, we invited families to come and plant trees in the memory of their loved one, which is called our Tribute Tree Program. Together, we have planted almost 60,000 trees over 12 years. Tonight, we are launching a new initiative, Art for the Heart. Art for the Heart is an exhibition honouring the use of art and craft as a strong foundation for healing. This is an inaugural exhibition and it is my pleasure to introduce its developer, Samantha, Samantha Rini, our community educator, to tell us more about it. But this um, exhibition was inspired partly by the fact that I'm an art teacher, a nurse and a healer and well that kind of all goes together, doesn't it? It just makes sense. But also, um, I don't know if you're aware, but the Archibald Prize winner for the People's Choice this year was actually um, a woman by the name of Jenny Sages. And she did a work called After Jack. And her husband had died the year before, her husband of 55 years. And she couldn't bring herself to paint anything for the Archibald Prize until her daughter said, why don't you paint what you're going through? And it was significant to me that this painting that is so full of grief was chosen by people as the best piece in the exhibition. And it really called to me that this is a significant issue and that people are drawn to works that come from the heart. And so I'm really proud that every work in this exhibition today does come from the heart. And it's not about whether it's good or whether it's right or whether the, there's three dimensions or not. It's about the message in the work. And I hope you're all each able to get that. Um, it's been an incredible privilege for me to be able to con have connection with each of the works and the artists who have contributed because I've got to know the story behind each one. And um, I was just saying when we were putting it up, I couldn't believe that every single name came to mind and every word comes to mind and I'm able to do that. And I can't even remember what I did yesterday. So it just shows the potency of story and the importance of what is going on here. So a big thank you, first of all, to everyone who took the time to contribute their work. It takes courage to actually put your feelings out in a public space. And, um, and so I'm really grateful for the people who were brave enough to step forward and do this for um, the community. Um, I'd also like to put a special thanks out for the people who actually donated their work. It's a real um, process in grief that you first of all feel that you can't afford to let anything go when you're in a state of grief. But as you slowly evolve through your grief process, you realise you still have a lot to give. And in donating work, you are giving a lot. So thank you. It's your time, your money and your heart. Yeah, what inspired you to make your piece of work? Well, I was doing mask making workshops with people and um, I developed a process um, to help people to connect with parts of themselves which they maybe hadn't explored fully prior to doing the workshop. So, of course, I explored the um, process myself. I think it had a healing effect. So there's a myriad of things happening in life at the moment, good, bad and indifferent, and it's about stepping away saying, you're, you're all right, you'll be fine, you know. None of us are very good at artwork, I don't think, but we did what we felt our hearts were the same. The part of the process that I followed is to um, actually go into a meditative state, and um, I created the mask and then afterwards I realised that there were parts of it which were quite life affirming that looked like trees growing and looked like there was something actually um, something new coming out of what fundamentally felt like quite a wounded place. And what's it like for you seeing the quilt here in the exhibition? <laughs> well, it's lovely. It's lovely to see it and that um, and these days I think grief is acknowledged a lot more and people live much greater understanding of that grief. And how is it for you seeing it in an exhibition like this? Well, it's quite startling. <laughs> and what would you say is the most challenging thing about being in the grief and having grief? Daily, weekly, monthly. You know, you know, it's it's back and forth. Sometimes you're going great, and then you have a moment, or something happens, or you have a memory, just sets you right back. But then you're stronger from the times before. And what 
inspired you to start the Life of Lost Group? Well, there were a number of women um, like me who had uh, experienced the birth of a baby and whose babies were taken off them at their position and they didn't get to see or hold their baby and, um, and often didn't know where their babies were buried. Is there anything else you'd like to share about the paintings or about your system? I just don't know this system. And looking at the paintings, does that make you feel closer to her? Yes, it does. And um, it's great to see it there because it's actually something that I feel um, uh, that I made at a time which was quite difficult. And now I know that there's there's quite a lot of water is under the bridge since then. And I think this was our way of showing it, putting it on, not on canvas, but on material. Mm -hmm.